Because some people believe that, you know, we just strapped the astronauts to a rocket and just fired them to the moon. But, you know, there's a lot of image reconnaissance that goes into planning these journeys. For example, this is an image taken at the Apollo 11 landing site in 1967 from one of the Lunar Orbiter 5 spacecraft sent to study the moon. The photograph is part of the Lunar Orbiter Image Recovery Project located at NASA Ames Research Center. To fast forward 43 years, Friday, last week was a big week, NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, LRO, returned its first imagery of the Apollo 11 landing site. In this photo, you can just make out something NASA left behind. As you know, LRO is the next step in returning astronauts to the moon. It's a robotic scout helping to find the best places to explore. In this image, you can just make out Eagle's descent stage. Oh, just finished that. By the way, it's LRO's first attempt, and future images will be even better. And by the way, those images are publicly available, and you can show them to anyone who somehow still believes that we faked it all. <laughs> so let's hear from someone who's had a bird's eye view of the Sea of Tranquility as well as a moonwalker's view. The man with first-hand experience to the moon in black and back, please welcome Neil Armstrong. so much. Thank you so very much. Whenever I come to this city, and if I have 20 minutes to spare, I come to this building. Not necessarily to look at craft hanging from the ceiling and sitting on the floors, but to absorb by osmosis or radiation or some unknown mechanism, some of the history that resides here. And it must have worked, because one young man recently said to me, Pop, your history. <laughs> so let me take one minute to recount some of those flights that you saw in the video earlier. Forty winters have passed since the first manned flights of the Apollo spacecraft. Uh, and so let's just kind of return uh, to that remarkable time between October of 1968 and November of 1969. Those 13 months began with the first manned Apollo flight, which demonstrated the ability of its command module to fly longer than a duration of a round trip to the moon. Uh, just two months later, second flight in a remarkably bold move, flew to and orbited the moon. The third flight in Earth orbit tested the lunar module in its inaugural flight. Two months later, the fourth flight took a lunar module to lunar orbit in a dress rehearsal that demonstrated the ability of mission control to, to uh, communicate and track two vehicles in different orbits about the moon. The fifth flight completed the final step, demonstrating the ability to de descend to, land on, and return from to learn the moon to, to lunar orbit. Sixth flight, the last flight of 1969, was nearly operational, landing on the lunar surface precisely alongside the Surveyor 3 spacecraft, which had arrived there two and a half years earlier. 
No flight test program of any complex flying machine was ever conducted so efficiently and with a, such a small number of flights. Six more, ever more complex and difficult flights would continue the e Apollo exploration program over the following three years. Those successes were, were very impressive 40 years ago, but they were not miraculous. They were the result of the imagination and inventive minds of the people in the Apollo project since, in, since its inception eight years earlier. Those years engendered some of the most challenging, most difficult, and most productive <clears throat> work in the history of modern engineering. Eight years, including a year and a half <clears throat> of redesign as a consequence of those deficiencies that were responsible for the tragic and fatal fire of Apollo, the Apollo 1 spacecraft. Creating a strategy, a configuration, and a craft to carry men to the moon was staggeringly complex. It required the very best in creativity, determination, and perseverance that could be assembled in the American workplace. Seldom in recorded history have so many government employees so intensely and for such long hours worked at their chores. And seldom have so many aerospace industry engineers and craftsmen been so careful, so diligent, and so determined. It was a superb national enterprise. Our knowledge of the moon increased a thousandfold and more. Techniques were developed for interplanetary navigation and travel. Our home planet has been seen from afar, and that perspective has caused us to think about its and our significance. Children, inspired by the excitement of spaceflight, have come to appreciate the wonder of science, the beauty of mathematics, and the precision of engineering. Young minds in our own country and around the world now believe they can do great things, and they can, if they apply themselves as intensely as the Apollo workforce did four decades ago. Tonight, we re remember a special time. We remember a time of passion for perfection. We re remember a level of achievement which really surprised us all. Human interest and media coverage this month confirmed that many others remember that time and remember Apollo with some warmth and even a little admiration. It left a lasting imprint on society and history. Tonight, we remember and congratulate all those who made it possible. Apollo was a good thing to do.